Okay, these days I received a lot of messages asking about the tools I use every day as a robotics engineer. And it's kind of difficult to answer because those are the tools that I only want to know. And that was a joke. And the actual difficulty is that I, I don't know how to set the boundary to list all them because I use a lot of tools every day as a robotics engineer or as an engineer. I need this kind of eye drops as well, which is most important because I don't want to burn my eyes. Also, when I need a lot of coffees, this kind of book is a very good tool as a tree bat, a cup holder or even pot holder if you have to eat ramen in front of your computer, right? However, today I did my best to pick top 5 tools that I'd like to share with you and this is actually not sponsored video of any, any company, any product so you don't have to feel like you have to copy me if you don't like them, don't use them if you like them, you can try them out so let's get started Oh, and if you're new to here, my name is Elliot, I'm a robotics engineer and educator and my mission is to help people land on this field of robotics as smooth as possible Tool number one, embedded system, uh, it's called Pixelk. This is open source hardware and then software project together and then hardware project name is Pixelk and the software is called PX4. And like I said, embedded system device, it has a SPI I2C port and then a PWM ports like this as well. You connect all these preferred sensors like GPS to here and then you can read the GPS immediately from your software as well and then you can manufacture all these sensor values like GPU and then um, IMU like accelerometer, gyroscope and all that. And then the good thing about this is that you can also add your own uh, servo motors or BLDC motors with here and then you can start with granular control of the motor drivers like ESC so it's really the off-the-shelf solution that can save a lot of time to get started with the project the cost of all, all these devices around like 100 200 300 ish and I thought when I was a student I thought it's kind of costly device however um, in terms of industry or company or professional project like research project I think this is really beneficial because it can save a lot of time and that even with this preferred device like GPS, it costs less than maximum $1,000. And I think that's really good benefit for the companies and professional projects as well. And even if you're playing with the toy projects, I, I recommend this kind of device because you wanna be a professional robotics engineer. And of course, sometimes I still use my own custom PCBs like this. Again, not sponsored, but like this, I often design my own PCBs. If I want to attach my own little sensors onto this device, then I design my own PCB. And obviously, I use Jetson series as well. Like Jetson series like this, this is actually a very older version of NVIDIA Jetson TK1. I've been using this like since 2014, 15, something like that. Because you don't want to put that kind of computer on your robot with all this uh, power supply unit and all that, it's just too heavy for any robot, it's just too large. Only difference is that this computer CPU architecture is ARM, so <laughs> you have to sometimes build your own OpenCV packages for ARM CPUs if they don't support, I mean, these days they support a lot, but when I was using uh, this, <laughs> I had to build OpenCV by myself and took 40 minutes or something like that. The tool number three, it is the camera. At the very early stage of my career, I used to use Microsoft Kinect version one for Windows. And I like that camera because it comes with the infrared sensor so that you can measure the depth. And that it has a nice, good API that I can just pick that point and I can get the 3D coordinate of this point from the image. So that was good, it's literally a depth camera. However, the downside of this infrared-based sensor is that it doesn't work outside in a sunny day because those cameras are literally based on the infrared sensor projector and receiver. And then this infrared sensor projection is very weak that if you use it outside sunny day, sun rays have much stronger infrared rays from the sun and blot out all these sensor projected infrared rays so it doesn't work outside. So that's the moment I started using this stereo camera is from uh, Stereo Labs Z it has literally two RGB cameras like this and it just literally works like our two eyes so that it can measure the depth. Measuring the depth is really really critical task in robotics because the robot needs to understand the 3D scene around this around it, literally. And then I was satisfied with this. However, this product is based on the rolling shutter. And then if you use it, 
outside for moving car. Like literally I mounted this on my car and then you have a lot of rolling shutter effects and I stopped using it again. And I was really frustrated and then I started building my own stereo camera using the low cost Chinese made camera like this. Single camera like this is around like uh, 80 bucks. And then if you can mount this on a bar like this and then you can make it a uh, stereo camera and then if you can calibrate your own camera then it's actually worse because these cameras comes with the global shutter so it doesn't have the rolling shutter effect however the resolution is not so good i mean it depends i mean if you invest more money for your sensors then it's going to be super fancy robot product and the downside of it is like i said you have to calibrate all these sensors by yourself and then if you're actually using the indoor application, these kind of cameras are just enough. Okay, next thing is about the 3D printers and then CAD program and then the CNC machine. However, I recently moved to a new place and I haven't been really organizing it, so I, I can't really go over in details of the hardware right now. Holy sh**, now you fucking clean all these mess. Instead, today I can talk more about the CAD software like Fusion 360. And back in the school, I used to use the SOLIDWORKS and I didn't have a great experience or maybe I didn't have a great memory because no one is really teaching it well in the classroom and I had to figure out and I just had a horrible time figuring out this and that. Later on, I started using the Fusion 360. I think it's more minimal, but I do not use Autodesk PCB designer because I think Autodesk bought the Eagle, but I don't like them. Again, I use this online tool from JL's PCB that you can not only design the PCB, but also you can just attach all these electrical components for your PCB, then you don't have to worry about stocking all these small components. And for software, when I actually prototype my idea or verify my idea, I always just go with Python because not only Python is easy, but also a lot of deep learning tools come with Python like TensorFlow and PyTorch. I use both of them in Python. Also, when it comes to simulation, I once, after my graduation, I once paid MATLAB, paid version, and I regret it because I only used it a couple of days and I never used it for an entire year. If you are in the research field in the universities and then I think the school give you the license so that you can use it for free. When it comes to simulation, I use the simulation tools from the robot operating system or I even customize my own simulation using the Unity uh, game engine or Unreal game engine as well. If it is really small simulation, I just type in my own dynamics environment using the ODE functions from the Python and then you can just simulate the behavior of your robot as well. And speaking of the Unity, I actually made this virtual robot so that you can learn the dynamics and then physical behavior of the robots along with the understanding of the code and math together. So check out that link if you're curious. Tool number five, robot operating system. I can never miss it. Robot operating system is not really an operating system, but it's more like a framework that helps you communicate one application with another application. And this tool is kind of handy and it comes with other software tools like simulation like Gazebo. It literally can help you reduce the time. So if you haven't used ROS, you gotta check it out right now. Well, if you don't want to, you don't have to, by the way. So here's my sort of a, sort of a, um, informal philosophy of, of the choosing tools, right? So tools are tools and then you are the engineer and then there's no constitutional law or universal physical law preventing you from using a tool over another tool. It's not like, no, it's just based on your choice. And then I, a couple of videos ago, I talked about some ROS alternative tools like Dora RS, like data we need uh, something, something in Rust. And then, but I kind of sense this, that Ross community is getting more like religious, that some people are not comfortable with the new tools that I suggest because they love the tools. But my personal philosophy is that you don't fall in love with a certain tool because tool is the tool. You are the engineer who got to choose which tool to use. And one of the messages I still remember is that my pronunciation about ROS, like you should read it as ROS instead of ROS. Well, actually, thank you for helping me out. I, I love this. And I have a personal memory about that name because back in the grad school, I literally had a lab mate whose first name is ROS, R-O-S-S. -S. Now we were like talking about ROS, ROS 1, ROS 2, that kind of moment at the time. And then we were like, 
kind of all rapping with each other. Hey, yo, Ross, did you get the DACA rapping Ross? Can you toss it so I can use it? Was like that, right? I right? I didn't feel like I want to rap in front of people, so, which I just did right now. But anyways, that's my habit. I'll try to adapt. So yeah, Ross is really popular tool. And I think it's at least you should try out because it's a handy tool. And then let me tell you my little secret. I still use ROS1, boom, right? And then I even read this LinkedIn posting that some these people from ROS2 community saying that everyone should move on to ROS2 and so on and so on. Like, yeah, well, that's the right argument. I agree with it. But are you going to pay the cost for upgrading the old project for the newer project for the small companies? It's not because the companies are lazy or they are stupid or something like that. It's, it's not really about your preference. It's about the money sometimes. So. Like I said, not because a random YouTuber said you gotta use this tool because I use this tool. No, I, I would never argue like that. So choose your own tools based on your project, your own situation, your own environment. And I respect that all, okay? And then if you are starting out this robotics field, check out my another video. In that video, I talked about how I start again if I started robotics engineering from the scratch. So check that out video as well. And then I'll see you in the next video.